Welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna be doing a little experiment or maybe an improvement down here in the very creepy basement. I am right here next to my battery bank and there is a bit of a noise right here. Um, I did a video on this Shelly. It's kind of part of the house automation uh, thingy but I can actually turn um, stuff on and off from my phone here. And um, yeah, it does that. Um, I have a light up here and I have this fan blower. Uh, we could just turn the light on. It's nice with some light, but the fan blower was a pain in the ass. Um, so I have this very big water heater right there. Um, yeah, it, it has gotten a bit of dirt on it, not great, but um, it heats the water in the house here. It has, uh, right now it has two systems. It uh, heats the water from the solar collectors uh, that, uh, that heat water, and then it has electric power. And right now it's, it's connected to 400 volts AC. Uh, it has a three kilowatt uh, heating element that is sitting down here. Here is the heating element. It's a three phase heating element. I did a video a long time ago. I was just checking that out. It's a uh, video number 277. So um, years back uh, where I connected uh, my solar system to this. Um, I didn't run it for very long because it kept draining the batteries. The battery setup wasn't that great at the time and the solar panels wasn't, I didn't have as many. So um, it, uh, it drained the battery and um, it did a little bit and then I would have to redo it. So I would like to connect this to my solar setup, which has improved since then. Oh, there's a nice shadow there. Um, and I want to have it on this Shelly uh, house automation thing just because I can see how many watts it draws this is 21.2 uh, watts for that uh, weird light up there it, it's pretty creepy and dirty down here but um, yeah it's, it's that LED light that is lighting up over there and um, yeah I think we can do that even though this goes up to this goes up to this 400 connector here I think we can just connect it up to 220 volts or 230 volts, which is what this inverter does, uh, which is, uh, I haven't been using it for much since um, the last one blew up on me. Um, yeah, I, I didn't like that much. So, uh, but today I think we can do something. I am thinking about taking this plug, which is a 16 amp 380 volts and um, yeah just using a couple of the connections and getting like 220 volts coming out that way and putting that into the water heater instead so um so that i'm not i'm not breaking anything or or restraining myself i can always just unplug this and put it back into the 400 volts um so that was what i was thinking Okay, so in that old video, I did this drawing, <laughs> which I can't find anywhere, but I have it on the screen here. And I have that plug that we just saw, the 400 volt plug, and that goes into a emergency safety relay, which is all mechanical. If the temperature in the tank over here rises above some level, this will unplug. Then it goes down to another relay, which is, it's a dual relay which means that it will cut first, it, it will pop in first the one of them and then it will pop in the next one of them so that you don't get uh, too much of a, um, a spike if both of them uh, connected at once. There will, there's a slight delay between them. Um, and But it's all connected so that there is three individual heating elements going into the tank over here. Each of them are at 52.5 ohms, but all three of them are connected in one end. And then we have the three faces from the plug up here going into that. It doesn't use the zero for anything. It just has those three faces. 
So I can connect two phases, probably use this, those two down here. And I would have a resistance of about 105 ohms. If I put 230 volts on here and I have a resistance of about 105 ohms, uh, because when I connect 230 volts to here and here, it will have to go through two heating elements. So we have to add the two uh, resistance here in ohms that will be um, added together. 52.5 plus 52.5 is 105 ohms. So 105 ohms, 230 volts is about 500 watts of energy that will go into the tank. I guess that is fine. I can also um, I can short circuit two of the heating elements so that it will first go in through one of the heating elements and then be divided and go out through the two other heating elements and that gives a it gives a higher that way I will be gaining a little bit more power but I think I want to start with the first one where I just um, add these two um, which I can then go up here and see that's that's the faces that comes in each end and the middle one I don't use for anything. So that's uh, that's the plan. So this is a kind of a very old system here. It's it's not widely used anymore these blocks. Uh, we have changed to something else, but they still work and you don't have to mess around. You can't put it in the wrong way. There is a the ground connection make sure that you can't do that. So it's not as if they're bad. Um, yeah, and these are from back when this kind of equipment was bloody expensive. This plug here could, on, on the, the wrong place, would, would easily cost you a hundred dollars back then. Nowadays everything is made in China and we have changed to another system that is more widely used in the EU, so all the prices have dropped considerably. So I'm gonna open this up and we're gonna see what I'm up to. Okay, here we have the plug inside. I needed this connector. I, I just cut the cable when I needed it so that I didn't have to mess with that at that time. So, yeah. Cool. So my plan was to, um, to put it on like a um, like a computer wire here. These wires are usually good for 13 amps. This one is actually 10 amps. We are not gonna be, well, we, we are only gonna be pulling a couple of amps. Uh, 500 watts is gonna be about two, 2.2 amps. So this wire is more than sufficient. And then um, I'll, I'll just make a short one like, like so. Um, and plug into that. If I change this and make it more um, permanently, and this is probably not the way that I'm gonna be going. But let's, um, I'll, I'll try and make this and I'll tell you what I did. Okay, maybe explain what this is. Um, we have 400 volts coming into our houses here in Denmark. That's the normal thing. Newer houses, sometimes they will, they won't do that. Um, but it's really awesome to have uh, an older house and if you get a newer house you will you can just ask for 400 volts. I actually have a lot of power coming into my house just because there used to be a shop in this house so they had some rather big machines. I think it was something some sewing or something sewing machines that kind of needed a lot of power I'm not sure but I have 50 amps coming into my house. So I have 400 volts of 50 amps coming in. Um, three phases, one, two, three phases, and then there's a zero and there's a ground. And um, each of those phases are, right now I think they're about 230 volts. They are going up towards 240 volts. They used to be 220 volts. So right now I have three phases of each 50 amps and 230 volts coming into my house. That comes out to be a damn lot of power, uh, which is also why I'm able to run a lot of server equipment. Um, I don't run it very often because it's also damn expensive. So that's um, a little bit about this. So let's get this all 
connects her out of there. And we need to connect to this one and that one with our 230 volts from the inverter up here. And then we will also connect the ground connections. All the other ones are not gonna be used. Okay, that looks like this. Um, I'll put this back together and we'll be able to measure the resistance when we, we plug this together and we can we can measure the resistance in here. All the safety of the heating element is mechanical and is located inside of here. Um, it measures the temperature inside uh, mechanically uh, and it cuts some relays in there. So I'm maintaining all the security uh, about this because water heaters like this can be very, very dangerous. If, um, if I just kept heating this water heater, um, it would blow up. So um, we are not doing that. We are leaving all the mechanical safeties in place inside of this box. It will cut all power if it becomes too warm. Okay, so I've completed this um, and we can connect that. So this one goes that way and then we should be able to measure a uh, resistance here between those two and with a little luck we should see about 105 ohms <laughs> 105 ohms perfect so um, yeah that's um that should give me about 500 watts so um, the Shelly device here for it has four output ports. I have I've connected two right now. I could actually just steal the connection from the, the fan blower here, but I think that we should just put in another connection. I was hoping to use connection number four um, to test this out, and I have made a little wire here that will be able to go down to connection number four. Before I do that, I do believe that I want to turn this off. So we'll shut this off and the lights go off. And I will also turn off the inverter just because I have had some bad experience. I will connect this and we'll be right back. Okay, so right now the fan blower of the charge controller is running, but I have uh, mounted this and we'll put on uh, this put that bag on okay it's just to make it look a little bit nicer and I have my plug coming out here so we're gonna wait a little bit with that we're gonna turn this on the inverter on first and then power this wait until it's it's good there then the Shelly thing here will, will it will boot. Uh, it takes a little bit for it to light up. There, it's doing something. And we need to check if it has gotten an IP number. This is connected to my Wi-Fi. We have a green light on the Wi-Fi here. If we press it, we can. Oh, it's it has gotten an IP number. Status got IP. It is connected to my Playhouse. So that part is good. So I should be able to access it from my phone. I have it here on Wi-Fi. So let's try and turn on the lights. Lights is on. Fan. It's on. I really should have washed that, shouldn't I? I'm gonna take this and put it I'm gonna put it back here somewhere. That's actually not a bad place for it. And we're gonna connect that. It isn't on, so nothing is gonna happen yet. And let's turn that on. Let's let me take a step back here. <clears throat> there. And let's power that. Yeah. We saw the light dip and it's using 456 watts. 
So, we are now heating the water. Awesome. So this being mechanical, it will measure the water in the tank and it will cut power when it doesn't need to heat it anymore. So this one is actually more or less, I can remotely turn on and off power consumption to the water heater and I can I will also be able to keep up with how much power have I actually used to um, to maintain warm water in my house here um, right now the Sun is actually shining outside which is not that often um, lately so right now I am also heating up the water from the water collectors on the roof but as we can clearly see here we are also pumping in a little bit of power um, to it so yeah charge controller just kicked in again making and when it's gonna be making more work it will probably also be running the fan more often we're in luck the um, water heater just kicked off over here we might just zoom in to see that we can kind of see that right now it's using zero watts also the Shelly here um, it has an app that you can use to uh, to maintain it, it it's um, it's in the cloud it's kind of a cloud thing so you register this and you can make uh, groups and rooms and stuff and you can control stuff um, I haven't I'm no expert at this at all but at some point I will be able to uh, to see how the power has been used uh, forth and back I will get some graphs here uh, at some point we have just turned this on so it's not ready to present us with any data yet but I will be very excited to see this um, graph and see how much power my water heater actually uses I have been a little bit afraid of it using um, a lot of power um, so this will help me check that so I have been wanting to try this for a while, I just haven't gotten around to doing that. Also, I want to have the water heater, which is on right now. I want to have my data center and I want to have my computer in the living room. And I have one more that I can do something with. Um, but right now I'll be testing the water heater for a little bit and see how, how that turns out. Uh, the water heater, normally it uses 3000 watts, so right now we are using 450 watts this of course also means that the water in the tank will take six times as long to get up into temperature um, it doesn't really matter it's all good I have time for that it just turned off <laughs> did we see that I think we got that I can go and get an element for the water heater that uses more power but this is actually not bad it's not putting on much drain on the inverter the inverter is for 2500 watts so it's using just one fifth of what the inverter can handle and well we could just turn off that bloody fan just so that you can better hear what i'm saying probably that thing is gonna turn on in a second just to mess with me but if i was to use the 400 volts 3000 watts i would have to get a, a very big inverter um and there is really no reason for that it really doesn't have to heat the water that fast and the water yeah there it goes and the water heater is it's a pain in the butt to change that i could get another water heater um maybe do a thousand watts or something i could also go in and change the setup of this water heater it really needs that security uh, I'm very happy with that mechanical stuff that is working in there and making sure that this uh, water heater doesn't um, don't go rocket on me uh, so yeah I'm gonna be trying this out a little bit and um, if something exciting happens I'll get back to you so thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye